Hey everyone, I'm Lacey Mullinax. I'm the Kids Church Leader at Echota Baptist Church. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe and healthy during this time. Um, I miss you all so much. And to our guest, welcome. We're glad to have you. Um, Our lesson today is Jesus as a Child. Last week's lesson was Jesus being dedicated. And last week's lesson was about Jesus being brought to the temple in Jerusalem by Mary and Joseph. And they met two people, Simeon and Anna. And both of those people knew that Jesus was the Messiah and they worshiped him. Um, And so they took what they heard and they saw and they spread that good news. And as Christians, that is what we are to do. We are to spread the good news, just like Simeon and Anna did. Um, And so today's lesson, we're talking about Jesus as a child and how God had a plan um, for Jesus. And even though Jesus was a child, he still wanted to do God's plan. So what you're going to do is you're going to watch the video, watch the lesson video, and then we're going to come back together and just kind of discuss some things. And then you're going to watch your missions video. And then at the end, I'm going to give you kind of like a little activity to do. And that'll be it for today. So enjoy the video and we'll be back. After Jesus was born, wise men followed a star to Bethlehem to find the new king of the Jews. The wise men worshipped Jesus as king. When they left, an angel told Joseph in a dream to leave Bethlehem because King Herod wanted to kill (laughs) Jesus. So Mary, Joseph, and Jesus went to Egypt until Herod died. Mm-hmm. Then they went back to Israel and lived in Nazareth. Jesus grew up in Nazareth. Every year, Jesus' parents traveled to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. Passover was the biggest holiday for the Jewish people. Many people traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate and remember when God saved his people from slavery in Egypt. When Jesus was 12 years old, Jesus and his family went to Jerusalem together. When it was time to go home, Mary and Joseph began traveling to Nazareth with a large group of people. They didn't notice that Jesus was not with them. They thought he was among the group of travelers, but Jesus was not with the group. He had stayed behind in Jerusalem. Mary and Joseph had been walking for a whole day when they started to look for Jesus. They looked among their relatives and friends, but they could not find him. So Mary and Joseph went back to Jerusalem. They searched everywhere for Jesus. The city was so big and Jesus was just a boy. Finally, they found him at the temple. Jesus was listening to the teachers and asking them questions. Everyone who heard Jesus could hardly believe how much Jesus understood. When Jesus' parents saw him, they were surprised. (gasps) Mary said, Son, why have you done this? Your father and I were worried. We've been looking everywhere for you. Why were you looking for me? Jesus asked. Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? But Mary and Joseph did not understand what Jesus was talking about. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus went back to Nazareth with Mary and Joseph. Jesus was always obedient to them, and Mary remembered all of these things. As Jesus grew up, he became even wiser. Mm. God was pleased with him, and so was everyone who knew him. God sent Jesus to earth with a purpose, even as a child. Jesus wanted to honor God, God blessed Jesus as he got ready to follow his father's plan to die on the cross and rescue people from sin. And now it's time for a mission video. This is Safi Ray. He lives in Lesotho, a country in Africa. Lesotho is surrounded by mountains. 
It can take three days for people in some of the villages to get to the nearest city. When Safire heard the gospel, he decided to follow Jesus and he wanted everyone in Lesotho to hear the good news. But because of the rough terrain, it took Safire a very long time to reach villages. That is, before Mission Aviation Fellowship arrived. For more than 70 years, MAF pilots have been flying into areas around the world that are hard to reach, like Lesotho. They partner with churches and other mission organizations to bring medical care, community development, Bible translation, evangelism, and ultimately hope to places where there is none. From deep in the jungles to rugged mountains, Mission Aviation Fellowship believes everyone deserves access to basic human needs and that everyone deserves a chance to hear the name of Jesus Christ. Safire's life has changed because of Jesus Christ, and he is thankful for many more lives being changed in Lesotho through the mission of MAF. Question? One question from kids. Now, questions from kids. Now, questions from kids. Now, questions from kids. Now, from questions from kids. Now, question from kids. Now, say it's time. Look at the camera. Now, good question for kids. Is that how you work? Now, question for kids. From kids. From kids. So, now, questions from kids. Now, questions from kids. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for Questions from Kids. Claire from Ashland, Oregon asks, I want to tell others about Jesus, but I get nervous. What should I say? Claire, before I answer the question of what you should say, let me just say this first. It's okay to be nervous. We all get nervous when we are sharing our faith. I think it's totally natural. The key is that we don't let our nervousness quiet us, that we don't share our faith because we're afraid. Instead, what we wanna do is trust in God and push through that nervousness, push through that fear, and be courageous and share our faith. So what do you say? That's the question that you really ask. Well, let me just give you a couple of pointers. First of all, remember this. When you're sharing your faith, you're really just telling somebody else about Jesus. You're sharing who Jesus is, that He was the Son of God, that He is the Messiah, that He came to save us from our sins. And so you're just kind of sharing those big ideas about Jesus with somebody. But also, you're sharing about why Jesus matters to you. You're not just giving facts to somebody. Remember, you're telling somebody you care about, about somebody you love deeply, about Jesus, and who loves you, that Jesus loves you and loves your friend. So what you want to do is just, just talk about why Jesus matters to you. Uh, what joy does He bring you? Why does it matter to you that He loves you and, and how He forgives you? So just tell your story, your testimony about what Jesus does for you, what He means to you. That's really simple when it comes down to it, isn't it? Um, sharing our faith is not the script. It's not memorizing four ideas or something like that. It's really just us having a conversation with somebody else about somebody, Jesus, whom we love very much. So let me ask a couple of questions back to you. What keeps you from sharing the gospel with others? And what are some ways that you can share your testimony, your story, with confidence? So as we end our time together today, I want to encourage you to do a cool little task and activity that is going to help you think of ways that you can share the good news with someone. I want you to draw a picture of yourself doing something that you enjoy. It could be playing outside, doing a sport, going to school, anything. And then I want you to write underneath it, I want you to write one way that you could share the good news with someone. Um, I really hope that you have enjoyed this video and I hope that you have a fantastic week. I miss you all so, so much and I hope that we can um, get back together soon in our normal setting. Um, at the church and have our um, dance sessions and have our Skittles and our M&M's and our goldfish. I miss you all so much. Take care.